all right again so like i said before it would benefit you enormously to already have a basic understanding of svelte before carrying on with this course and if you want to learn svelte in detail then i have got a whole series that's going to teach you all about it from the ground up so i'm leaving a link to that series down below the video but i am also going to use this lesson right here to give you a quick overview or refresh it if you like on swells component if you don't need this feel free to skip to the next lesson but for the rest of us what is component well a component is basically a standalone section of a web page for example a navigation bar could be a component an article on your web page could be a component or a banner could be a component as well in swelt kit whole pages are represented by components as well so if you have an about page we would have an about component to represent that page and if we have an index page we would have an index component to represent that page and that's exactly what we have right here an index component well this page.swell file is our index file you know that right so whenever i say index file i'm talking about this page.swell file and this index component inside the routes folder is the component which we will see if we go to the index page of this website We'll talk about pages and routes a little bit more about later on. But for now, I just want to focus on the components themselves. Now, swell components have to be named something dot swell. That way, swell kit knows that this is a swell component, right? And inside the swell component, we can essentially have three different things as HTML template, which is the HTML that will be rendered into the browser. A script tag for any interactive JavaScript code for this component or any reactive dynamic values that we want to inject into the template. And finally, a style section for any CSS to style the templates. And that's pretty much all of it. At the most basic level now, you don't actually need to have the script tag or a style tag. And a component can just be an HTML template. But most of the time, you will find yourself using these other things as well. A script tag and a style tag. So let's take a closer look at this index component and play around with it. So the first thing I'm going to do is just change up this template a little bit. So let me get rid of all that and then we'll do a div and I'm going to give this a class of index so that I can style it down here. And inside here and by the way generally when I have pages and components as pages what I do is I give each one a class which represents that page. So I can style that page but you don't have to do that. Anyway inside here we'll do an S2 with you know some title and then down here I'll do a paragraph tag. And then just style this index tip a little bit. I'm just going to paste this lecture in. And all we see is text aligned to the center, display is blocked, and margin top is 20 pixels, and bottom is 20 pixels as well. Also left and right. So basically everything is just going to sit in the middle of the page, center aligned. And it's going to have a bit of margin top and bottom as well. So now let's just save this and preview in the browser. Alright, and there we go, that's all worked. So we have the title and the paragraph, and everything is centrally aligned. And I don't have to refresh the browser to see that changes. It just automatically did it for me when it recognized that we changed the swell component and saved the file. Alright then, so what if we wanted to output some kind of dynamic value in the template? As well, for example, we could have a variable up here, which I'm going to name title. And we'll set it equal to one piece review. But if we have wanted to output whatever the value of this variable is inside the template, well, we can do that. We can output dynamic values inside curly braces. So curly braces and then the name of the variable. And now we are going to see this one piece review value inside the S2. And we can see that right here. We get the title, which is the value of the variable. Awesome. Now, when we use a dynamic value like this title in a template, that's coming from up here in the script. Whenever this value changes of this variable to something else, then the change will be reflected in the template because it's a reactive value so it's well to react to the changes in the value so let's do an example imagine we had a function which is then going to change this value so let me create that function first of all and i'm going to call it update title so set it equal to function and then inside here all we need to do is say okay we'll take the title and set it equal to enemy is the best all right so now it becomes this new string value now that's fair enough but when do we actually run this function to change the title well, if we wanted to, we could run it in reaction to some kind of use event. So I could create a button down here, for example, and that button is going to say change the title. And then if we wanted to add some kind of event listener to this, I can do that by saying on and then a colon and then whatever the event in this case, click and then we set it equal to something dynamic. So curly braces, now we are setting it equal to something dynamic because we want to pass in a JavaScript function. And that function is update title. So now we don't need to invoke it because that's automatically going to invoke the function. When will the page instead, we just want to pass in a reference. 
so that when we click the button it then returns the function so now when we click on this button it's going to run this function and it's going to run this code update the title to be this new value and when the title updates that change is going to be reflected in the template so let's give it a go all right so now we can see this button down here change the title and watch the value of this change right here so this is the initial value of the variable title right if we click on this we run that function and it updates the title variable and when a variable change that we use inside the template then it's reflected in the template as well now one more thing i want to quickly show you as well and that's how to bind values or variables to input fields so say for example a user want to type into an input field whatever they type into that input field i'd like to update the title to be that value so if they type in hello then the title becomes hello and then when this changes obviously that title is going to update down here as well so let me show you how to do that how to bind values to inputs because this is something you will probably do if you have some kind of web form when you are using swell or swell kit so let me do an input first of all the type is text and all i need to do is come over here and add a bind attribute and then a colon and then what do we want to bind to well we want to bind to the value of this input so you know input fields have value attributes and that controls what's displayed in the input we are binding to that and we are going to bind a specific variable to the value attribute so that when the value of the input changes then the variable will change to match that and vice versa if i was to change the title by clicking this button for example then the value of this input would be updated to match whatever the title is all right so they both stay in sync with each other so we set this equal to not quotation but curly braces instead and then whatever the variable we want to bind to in our case it's the title so let's save this and check it out when we first load the page we can see that the value already is one piece review and that's because we have bounded the value of this input to be the value of the title itself so the initial value of the title the variable is one piece review and that value is then showing in the input so if we change this though if i delete all then it's going to be bind back to the title and change the title to be now an empty string and because that changed where it's outputting the template we see an empty string as well if I change this to hello, then it becomes hello over here. And this still works if I change the title, it's going to update it to anime is the best. And also that changes is reflected down here. Because again, we have bound that variable to the value attribute of the input. Alright, so hopefully those different concepts give you a bit refresher as to how the Swell components work. So again, if you want to learn more about Swell, click on the left video on the screen. And if you want to access the Swell Kit playlist, then click on the playlist on right hand side. And now we know a little bit more about components. Next up, we are going to move on and talk about pages and routes in Swellkit. So, adios!